Welcome to the wonderful world of For Honor, where Vikings, Samurai, and Knights definitely do not live in harmony with one another. If you want to survive in these grim times, then this is the video for you. Yes, that means playing the campaign. A lot of people give the For Honor story mode flack, but I can't. It gave us two absolutely fantastic memes. Dominate, show yourself! I don't speak Japanese. More than anything, you'll learn how a few of the heroes function, including the Warden, Peacekeeper, and Lawbringer of the Knights, Raider, Warlord, and Valkyrie of the Vikings, and Kensei and Orochi of the Samurai. You'll also fight a lot of the other heroes too, so you learn the combos that you can use as these heroes, as well as how to defend against these combos. Congratulations, you've just graduated from the grade school of For Honor. I bet you think you're ready to jump into the multiplayer now, don't you? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Whoa there, we still have a few more topics to cover first. Playing the tutorial, especially after completing the story mode, might seem useless. But is free steel? Of course not! Both the basic and advanced tutorial will also help you nail down the timings of parries, deflects, and counter guard breaks if you haven't already in the story mode. These are three techniques that you will need to be very very good at in order to ensure your survival in PvP. These techniques can also be practiced as much as you'd like, consequence free, so you can work on your counter guard break for a good 10-20 to 20 minutes without any fear of dying. Well, you're not Go play the campaign again, but on realistic if you haven't already. This mode eliminates most of the elements of the HUD, or the heads up display, including the enemy's attack indicator. It will teach you to really read your opponents and not rely on the attack indicator, which is especially useful when you get dazed in multiplayer and lose the HUD anyways. More than anything, you'll be better at reading situations and being a little bit more cautious. If you can time a parry in realistic mode, good. If you can deflect, whew, even better. Now that you've officially graduated from the For Honor Secondary School, it's time to choose whether you continue your education or jump right into the real world. If you still aren't feeling confident, I suggest jumping into the PvAI games to mercilessly destroy some bots and further bolster your skills. If you're feeling confident though, jump right into the PvP for a bit of a bigger challenge. Don't get discouraged though, keep in mind that many of these players online have been playing the game since the alpha and the beta. Learn to treat it like Dark Souls, where every death acts as a lesson. Choose your destiny. Now just because you align yourself with the Knight Faction doesn't mean that you're restricted to those characters. However, us Tin Cans will still brand you a traitorous heretic when you choose a neckbeard or a weeb. You're a heretic! FYI, you'll know a hero is top tier or not if they have good emote spam. It's a good idea to stick to one or two characters as no two characters are alike, and you really want to be as good as you can at whoever you're playing as to survive. Most of the characters you've already gotten a feel for, but feel free to test them out more online and see which ones are your favorite. It's game time! Hey, thanks Lego Shack. For Honor has a total of 5 game modes, 1v1 duels, 2v2 brawls, and 4v4 skirmish, elimination, and dominion. Duels are just fights settled the old fashioned way, minus rust and the tiger camo intervention. Brawls are just a team of two fighters versus another team of two fighters. Skirmish is a 4v4 deathmatch. Rack up kills for them sweet kill streaks. Enemy AC 130 above! Elimination is a 4v4 deathmatch with no respawning and only reviving until one team is victorious. Win the best 3 out of 5 rounds to achieve victory. Dominion is a 4v4 deathmatch with 3 command points. Holding command points earn your teams more points, so PTFO. This involves killing and dying multiple times. Through this process, you're going to learn what works and what doesn't work, as well as learning about techniques that aren't actually directly stated. For example, did you know that throwing an opponent into a wall stuns them long enough for any character to get a free top heavy, which is the highest damaging standard attack of most characters? The more you play, the more little things like that that you'll learn, and the better your reaction timing will be, which means you'll be able to land parries and flex better as well you'll be able to get better at reading opponents and situations, knowing how to counter them perfectly. Okay. 
but I don't want to use my hands! Oh! As much as I want to say this step is literal, it's not. Unless you're this asshole. Oh look! There's a ledge with a high enough fall that will surely kill me. I better stand in front of it. This one sounds really obvious, but many people forget it. I don't care how nice that water feature looks, or how much those spikes resemble top tier armor, stay the hell away from them. But you can always use this to your advantage. If you position yourself so that the enemy is in between you and the hazards, you can use that for maximum damage. Without the giant enemy crab. On the note of fighting smart, don't be a hero. DRAGONS! Seriously, if you're in a situation in 4v4 game modes where you're gonna be outnumbered, don't think, hey, this time is gonna be different, I'm gonna get a sweet 4v1 kill. Seriously, stick together, don't be an idiot. Much like the Steven Seagal movie, you're gonna be murdering people left and right. However, in For Honor, there's a lot of weird notions of what can and can't be done in a fight. For example, true, honorable warriors will always have some kind of bow or respectful emote. They don't attack during their opponent's emote. They don't gank. And they don't ledge. You typically see these honor bros in duel, brawl, and elimination. These people often get upset when people don't follow their made up rules. Now I'm gonna leave this one up to you. You can play by your own code of rules if you want, but don't have a hissy fit when others don't follow those same rules. Just sometimes you need to shut the fuck up. I know that sounded a lot more rude than I wanted it to be, but really just take a deep breath. Keep calm and keep a level head. You're a lot more likely to make mistakes if you embrace your inner angry German kid. Just shut up, accept that you messed up, and move on. After all, it's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Now, if you follow these 10 steps, you should see yourself becoming a better player. If you'd like any more tips or suggestions, leave a comment down below, and I'll be sure to make a follow up to this video should it get enough response. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you on the battlefield, assuming you have a PS4.